Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to jump into part two of the Department 56 Sleepy Halloween uh, vignette or village that I'm doing. I've uh, taken the liberty to cut uh, the second part of the base out. And so what we're gonna look at today is we're actually going to, uh, on video, we're going to look at the design series and show you how I kind of placed everything and why I placed it there. And then we're gonna actually cut holes uh, for the lights to go through, and then we're going to tunnel those so you can see how we're going to hide the cords. I've had a lot of people say, how do you hide the cords? So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And then we're also going to cut some stairs um, that's going to be a little tricky. These buildings are much smaller than the normal scale. These are about like the Dickens Village uh, in terms of size uh, versus like the uh, Snow Village uh, Halloween series uh, size. So a little bit smaller, so a little bit smaller stairs to kind of keep it with the same uh, concept and design. And then we're gonna cut the riverbed and show you how we're gonna cut the riverbed. And had a lot of good suggestions on, you know, maybe terminating that at the front with a waterfall coming across. I think it's a wonderful idea. And so that's what we're gonna do. Don't know exactly how I'm gonna accomplish that yet, but that is what we're gonna to work towards uh, and just to have that kind of coming across the as a waterfall falling off the edge of the vignette, which I think is gonna look absolutely wonderful. So I hope you're ready. There's gonna be a lot today. It's probably a little bit longer of a video, more technical, but that's what you guys uh, are subscribing to the channel to see is how do you do this stuff? So uh, let's jump right in and take a look. Okay, guys, I've got the, uh, the village out and set up uh, sort of the way I want it. Now, I cut the top parts of these uh, this morning. Uh, they're not exactly to size because obviously it's hard to trace, um, you know, on top of something you've already drawn on. So they're pretty close. Uh, I'm pretty happy with them. I think I'll terminate the edges with the sort of the rocky uh, face there as well. Uh, we're going to have some stairs cut right behind uh, this piece here that kind of goes up this so you can kind of see that coming out. Uh, obviously, we're going to cut holes uh, for the lights to go through. And then we're going to cut this big riverbed that's going to come back from underneath this sign all the way out to the front. And then we're going to terminate it. Obviously, I've got a poor resin, so we can't come all the way off yet. Uh, so we'll figure out how to do that. And then I'm going to cut a hole uh, for the light here and obviously a hole for the light here and some stairway, uh, some stairs coming out of this, this piece as well. Don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet. So we'll kind of figure that out together. And then, I, you know, for the, for the front of this stuff, I think what I'm going to do is incorporate some craggly type rock work into this and then sort of transition into maybe a a stone type retaining wall right before the stairs on either side and then transition back into some craggly kind of rock formation similar to this on the front is what I think I'm going to do and I think I'm going to do the same thing uh, here on this side so sort of a craggly rock transition to a stone sort of a you know beef that area up for the stairs and then back into the the uh, the craggly rocks on the on the front and on the side of that to sort of match that. I think that's what I'm going to do. That could that's always subject to change. So, so I've got a pencil here, and what I've done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cut holes to put the lights through. And so what I've done is I've taken a pencil and I've already traced around these with a pencil. And so if I pull this piece up, you'll see you'll see the outline of the house. And obviously, if you look at the house. We're gonna go straight, basically right into the middle of that cutout, and that's where uh, that is going, uh, that hole is going to be. I did the same thing uh, for uh, the house here and the, the little schoolhouse down here. So if you look, I gotta be very careful in picking these up, but you can see the outline of the, uh, the house, and then obviously you can see where the cord's gonna go. So that'll be the first thing we're gonna do. Uh, and before I even want to do that, I want to show you sort of the tools that I've got. So let me come over here. Don't mind uh, the kitchen counter. We obviously live here. But I, I kind of put everything in a little toolbox. It helps to keep it somewhat organized for me. I picked this up at uh, Lowe's for 
12 or $15. And so basically I've got all my hot wire foam tools in here. I've got the larger transformer that helps me to work. Obviously you can adjust your temperature on that. And then all the tools and a Sharpie down in here. And today we're gonna to be using this long knife. I think this is about a eight or a 10 inch uh, knife. And obviously that will go through both pieces of the foam to help do that. And then to do some of the stone work, we're gonna be using the handheld engraving tool from Hotwire Foam Factory. And then for cutting the riverbed and the stairs, we're gonna be using the uh, sculpting tool or the, um, I don't remember the exact uh, fundamental name of this, but it's kind of a, a trenching tool as well. So we're gonna be using that to trench the lines to run the cords underneath, and then we're gonna be using that to cut the um, the riverbed. And the cool part is you can shape this uh, any which way you want it uh, to get any shape you want. And so we'll be adjusting this accordingly on how we go about that. So let me, let me get this all set up and plugged in and ready to go, and then we'll come back and show you how we're gonna cut. Okay, so I've got everything set up, and so I've got everything removed. I've just kind of slid this over top of my sink to give me a room to work all the way through. Uh, somewhat recommended to do this outside. This will smoke a little bit, so um, obviously you want to mask up and try to do this in a well-ventilated area. Uh, so we're going to be doing this pretty quick, so I'll take my, my chances. So a couple of things. What I'm trying to do is I don't need to get a hole big enough to take the light bulb or the this... Uh, you know, these prongs to keep it in the building. I just need the hole big enough to go through uh, this um, this uh, plug. So basically, just kind of outline that. Uh, I can take my pencil and sort of say, okay, I want the hole to be about like this, something like that, just to give me something to trace or to, to use as a guide. Uh, this kind of out of camera, but I've got the tool uh, it's on and plugged in. And so what I'm gonna do now is simply uh, take, I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna come straight down through here. It's very hot through both. And just simply cut a circle, just like that. And then poke that all the way through. I'm gonna put this off to the side. So you see these fell all the way out. So this is what uh, sort of came out of the, the hole. And then let me just kind of raise this up a little bit so you can, you can see, I'll have to raise this up. Bear with me guys, this is gonna be a, a more <laughs> difficult video for me to shoot because of trying to work and do this at the same time. I don't wanna knock those buildings off, but you can kind of see that goes all the way through. So very, very simple. So that's the first hole, right? And now let me reset back down here. Let me readjust. Okay, so hopefully you saw how simple that was just to go straight through both pieces of foam and cut right down through to allow the cores to drop right through the bottom of both pieces. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our handheld uh, sculpting tool or uh, trenching tool and we're going to shape it. And now obviously this is not plugged in right now because it gets really, really hot. So be very mindful of that, right? You can get in a hurry and that's not a good thing. And so I'm just gonna kinda bring this in pretty close to something about like this, right? And so really what I'm trying to do is to allow for this cord to go uh, through the foam. So it doesn't need to be real wide, all right? And so we're, what we're gonna do is I will take this foam and then uh, I'll readjust the camera here so you can see it. Let me plug this in and then readjust and I'll show you how we're gonna cut the, the trenches for the cores and I'll show you exactly how they fit in there. Okay, so I've repositioned this where you can see me cut both of these trenches. And so this is the back, up here is the back of the display. Obviously this is the bottom. 
This is the back. This will be facing towards the wall. So we want all of our trenches running back towards the wall. These are pretty close together as far as being in a line. So I'm gonna bring one out and around and the other just straight back. Now watch how simple this is. I wanna go probably, I don't know, maybe a half an inch deep or so. So you just basically come straight up here and there is your trench for that core to slide right back out of. And we're gonna do the same for this one. Okay, I am back and I've got the light cord that would be used in one of these homes and it doesn't matter which one I put it in. I'll put it into the, uh, the longer one here so you can see. Again, this is the back of the display. You can see where the trenching comes out of the back. And so simply uh, to, to get this ready to display, I would put the cord in like so. I would have everything out of the way. Now, the one thing you've got to worry about are these little things. You may have to see where that's going to line up and, and cut and carve a little bit more out to hide it. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, and so that's going to sit kind of like that. And then this is simply going to come uh, right through here. You can, uh, I'll adjust the camera so you can see this. And what I typically do is I will take some, and I'll, I'll widen this out just a little bit in this area. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. But typically what I'll do is once I get the cords like this, I'll take some masking tape uh, and just kind of put it over the bottom to hold that cord in place. I don't like these. I wish they wouldn't put these on. Obviously they do. Uh, and so that's gonna require a little more, uh, a little more uh, cutting. So, um, wrapped around kitchen cabinets here. So right about in this area here, we'll just simply widen this out. Kind of like that. You don't have to get pretty with it. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, all you're trying to do is widen that out a little bit for that to sit in. Okay, now let's put the tool down and see how that looks. Now we've got plenty of room for that bad boy to stay, you put a piece of masking tape over that and it's sitting in there pretty neat all day long. So nothing fancy, it doesn't have to, you don't have to go crazy with it, but you do have to sort of take some measurements to know where that's gonna go. But that's how you hide your cords. And then when this sits down flat uh, like this, uh, now obviously it works better with the tape on there, but you can sort of see um, how that sits on there and sorry about the camera work there and then you can see how it comes right out of the trench hole and then you've got this in the back to plug into your adapter or what have you and you've got your light up here and so you are ready to go with the cords nowhere in sight on this display so hopefully that helps and makes sense on how to hide your cords and so now let's take a look at cutting some stairs Okay, so I've unplugged this, it's cool now. So we're gonna take it from the trenching part that we use to cut the cords into uh, sort of a foam, foam, uh, form it uh, into uh, some stairs. Now, again, I've gotta measure these stairs to make sure that they're somewhat uh, the right size. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit smaller than I normally cut stairs, but I think they'll be all right. So as I continue to foam, or uh, form, I keep saying foam. <laughs> if I can continue to foam, form this into the right size, I'm trying to make it as square and as flat and symmetrical as possible. And that just requires some patience and uh, finger strength there to sort of get it the way you want to have it to try to get it as square as possible. And just let me put this onto the, uh, the foam here and see if that looks about the right size. To me, that is as wide 
is the gate. So if I hold the gate up, that's about as wide as the gate. So that's really about as wide, I think, as the stairs need to be. So how do we do this? Well, we gotta obviously plug this in. Uh, I've gotta get the pencil again. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of measure the, if this is going to be the entryway, right? And I'm trying to draw that on there as we speak and then sort of move that out of the way. And so now you can see the, uh, it's hard to see. Let me see if I can get you guys a little bit uh, closer for this. So bear with me here. Trying to get you a little bit closer as we kind of go through this together. So I think that'll probably be sufficient there. Okay, so as we do this, I'm going to now transfer these lines that I've drawn, they're very light, up to here. So I want my stairs to be somewhere in between here. And then how far back do I wanna go? It really, I mean, I've got two inches. So there's no science behind this. So the way that I will take this is basically at this angle, sort of this angle to match the lines down here and then down, over, down, over. And so you just kind of practice this. The, the stairs are always difficult for me. They're not ever, for me, gonna be perfect, but I need to get them somewhat close. So I'm probably gonna start back into that area there. Let me grab my trusty pencil again, just to sort of measure. Okay, I wanna probably start back in there. And so when I do, I'm just gonna go down a little, down, uh, forward a little, down a little, forward a little, down a little, until I'm coming all the way down to here. And so we'll try that. Now what I'm gonna do is before, I'm gonna plug this in and get it hot, then this is, come, all the buildings are gonna come off and I'm just gonna use this uh, by itself. I, I don't wanna cut into this foam down here either. So let me plug this in and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back. I've got this, obviously you've seen the shape. We did that previous. And so I always try to take, before I cut stairs, because they're so incredibly, uh, for me, it's difficult to do. Even to this day, I certainly feel a little more comfortable with it, but I always try to practice because one, you don't wanna, so I've got a variable temperature tool, right? So the transformer is variable temperature. I can adjust the temperature to very, very hot or not hot at all. And so I always try to use a test piece before I start cutting stairs, just to one practice and see if it's hot enough or is it too hot? And practicing for me is a, a way to hopefully not screw up the real piece. That's not great. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do one more, one more set of stairs just to see if I'm satisfied with the heat of the tool. So, okay, again, that's, that's, I need to start coming out more with the stairs. So very little stairs, very huge uh, area there. And that's not what I want. So one more practice here. This is gonna hopefully get it. So. Little more pull on these and that's not too bad. Those are, Pretty decent stairs there. I could live with those. So these are the real stairs. So uh, let me hold this the right way, get down at the proper level. And here we go with the stairs. So very steady. That's a long pull, I don't know if I like it, but it is what it is. Those are the stairs that we're stuck with, and I think they'll be all right. They'll, we, can, we can certainly work with those. And so what I'll do is start to, to kind of 
and I, I don't know that I'll use this tool uh, to kind of shape these. I may I may use just some sandpaper to start with and and kind of you know shape it the way I want it. So for now, I'm going to leave those stairs. We're going to get the next set and draw those stairs and make sure that's what we want, and we'll go from there. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got this piece set up now, and same thing. I'm going to kind of bring uh, sort of a little trail out here. You can see I've drawn the lines up to sort of kind of place where that stairway is going to be. And that's going to be some grass with a pumpkin patch out in this area here. And then around, uh, it's hard to, hard to see what I'm showing you there, but uh, sort of around through here. And then some grass, this is going to be the, the main road. So I'm contemplating either bringing the stairway over to here to give it more of a, a, a path this way. And I may actually do that. That may be more of a bring it out this way and then bring the stairs over here. I think I may like that better. So somewhere in that general area there is where I'm going to try to cut the stairs out for this one. And this will all be detailed, like I said. So the, the walkway will kind of come up here and then kind of meander away back to the door. And I think that's good because the stairs will actually sit way back into here anyway. And so, uh, and again, they'll be all formed and, and uh, once the detail is on it, they'll look, they'll look pretty good. So uh, let's, let's see if I can get that cut now. So let me reset this up and uh, we'll come back and cut. not too bad and again there's a hundred ways you can cut those out but you as we, after we round them all and uh, it's painted and detailed i think it'll look just fine so there you have it that's how you cut stairs okay so the stairs are done at least for now the cuts are done we got to go through and do some detailing and kind of clean those up and uh, once they're painted and everything's on them they'll look just like uh, stairs you'll never you'll never guess uh, that they were <laughs> difficult uh, to do. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the riverbed. So I've got to reshape this trenching tool to something along the, the way of a river. I don't want this too deep and I've got to measure everything. And so I'm just trying to get it sort of the, the, the shape that I do want. And I almost want it to flare out a little bit on the sides, uh, but I don't want it that deep for sure. So uh, let me readjust the camera and see if uh, the size is right for this, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I think I've got the, sh the shape and the size about right. And if I put that back onto this, I know it's a little difficult to see, but it, it sort of matches up with the width of the, the riverbed that I've drawn. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, and these lines are just there for a reference. And so I don't want to start... I'm gonna probably start the river probably, I want the sign to be hidden. I mean, I want the river to go underneath the sign. So I'll probably start it right about there on the back and then ending it, I don't wanna go through because I've gotta have a way to get the resin to stay in here without having to try to mask all of this up on the front. It's, it's uh, you know, if I wanted to do that, I should have had this cut straight uh, and then do that. Now, I guess I could just cut this off since we're going to put a waterfall there, but then I would have to add, you know, rocks and stuff later. And so I think I'm just going to cut it here and then maybe carefully carve all this away at the front and just let the waterfall come across with some... Uh, uh, different methodologies for that. So let me turn the heat on. I want this a little hotter uh, than we had it before for the stairs, for sure. So I just turned that on. I'm going to give it a second to heat up. And so the, the, this is the lines again are just a reference. And so the way this tool looks, and it's starting to smoke now because obviously we cut the stairs. So uh, I'll get going here uh, in a moment. Uh, and obviously I <laughs> left it onto the, the phone, which is not smart uh, or good. So it kind of cut into that, but that'll all be uh, taken care of. So here we go. We're going to start cutting this. I don't, I don't want to go incredibly deep. 
and this river is just going to kind of meander through here. I do want it straight as we come to the bridge because the bridge is critically important to go straight. So you see how I went straight there and now I can sort of start meandering away. Uh, it looks like it's, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't seem as wide as what I want it to be. So, all right, let's pull this up and that's because it, I've got to cut more. That's, that's not deep at all. I mean, it is, but I, I want to go a little bit deeper than that. This is deep back here. This is fine. So I'll probably start right in here, go a little bit deeper through here. Not crazy though. I don't want to go crazy with it. Now I will get straight again, going across the road. And the reason I don't want to go crazy deep is because then all the resin that you've got to unnecessarily pour to kind of keep it that way. So let's see what that looks like. All right, that's pretty deep, uh, but uh, that'll work. So I'm going to deepen this out here just to sort of match just a little bit. All right. So I think that'll do it guys. That, that is the riverbed cut. I will work on this as we get uh, closer. Uh, but this is actually, this does, doesn't look too bad. Let me uh, put this tool down and turn it off so it stops smoking. Um, and so that is how the riverbed is going to look. And obviously we're going to decorate this. It's going to be painted and, and then we're going to, uh, to pour the resin. The resin will be the last, one of the last things we do to this project. But I do want to grab the bridge and just sort of do a test fit. And that is, if you can see that, that's about uh, perfect. If you can see that there, that's not too bad at all. And that's one of the reasons I really wanted to go straight as we're coming across uh, this area here. And so you can kind of see that that's, that's just about perfect for that bridge to sit on. So that's, that's good for the bridge. Uh, that's about the deepest I wanted to go. And I don't know exactly how much resin that'll be. Once we get the rocks in there and the sides, you know, with the rocks and kind of make it look like a river and get the texture and the paint in there, it won't be nearly as much. And so, um, but I think it's a good depth. So we're going to go for that. So okay. Hey, so before I show you the whole thing put back together, what I wanted to do is uh, kind of bring you outside into the garage. And so I'm going to reshape and reform these. And what I'm going to use is I have my Dremel tool, right? You, if you're going to craft, you really need one of these. If you, they have these at uh, Costco all the time for, I think it's like $79, but you get a whole kit. Uh, it's got everything in the world that you would need with it. The one thing I like is this uh, rotary tool that sort of attaches to it. It's almost like a pencil. So you can kind of set that down on the table and just use this like a pencil. And I've got a, a small, a uh, piece of sandpaper, uh, huge truck going by. I don't know why you would need a truck that big, but whatever. Uh, so you've got a, uh, a little piece of sandpaper on there. And so what I'm going to do is show you how I'm going to shape uh, the stairs and around the stairs before we do some carving into that. So let me reposition the camera so you can see better and we'll get started. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this and I'll try to keep this out of the way as, as much as I can. I'm going to turn this on to probably uh, two. It needs to be really low to start with, right? And then we can change uh, bits and go with a little bit faster if we need to. But I've got it on about two, which is the lowest speed. This is going to make a mess as long as we're doing it in the garage. Okay, so we're going to start to round these corners off.
Okay, so I've finished that up. Now, obviously this is all gonna be carved, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried you know, right into the stair area. And it's pretty good, it's not bad, but I do have this little uh, sanding bit here that's not real sandpaper, it's a little more smooth. So I'm gonna change that out real quick. And uh, so, again, this makes quite a bit of a mess. So if you uh, give me just a second here, I will change this bit out, I'll put this one in. All right, tighten it down. Turn it back on. This time it's on four. Now you could turn this up to maybe six. And you're just gonna do roughly the same thing to kind of smooth some of that out. Gives it a little more of a smooth finish. And again, you're just kind of rounding it off, especially around the top where it would be a little more worn. Hopefully you can see that. And if you don't want to make a big mess, you could use this tool from the very beginning. There's nothing wrong with that. we're about to call that one done. So anyway, you can see uh, through a little, uh, little trial and error and uh, you know, you can, you can certainly fix that. And what I may do is I'll, I'll probably bring the other tools out in the garage. It's just a little easier to work out here, especially with the ventilation and then start doing some stonework, uh, kind of faded down and then some rock work around the edge. And then we'll call these done. Let me finish the other one and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've got uh, these done. As far as I can tell, these are done. They, they look a little bit better, I think. Uh, a little more rounded and presentable. Uh, the other one was a little more difficult. It didn't want to take shape as much, but it is rounded in the front and it does look, I think, better. Uh, a little more smooth, and so I like that. So now what we're gonna do is I've got my handheld engraving tool out here and I've got everything plugged in. So I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit and then we're gonna put some uh, stonework around the uh, stairs leading up and then we're gonna transition that into some craggy, uh, craggy type rocks uh, to match the other, uh, the base of the vignette. So let me load the camera and we'll start with the carving or the uh, engraving. Okay, so we're ready to start. I know the lighting out here is not the greatest. Uh, it's, it's having a hard time focusing because it's so bright. But really what I want to do is just kind of start doing some stonework. And uh, I don't want to go crazy big. And then once uh, everything is, is done, you kind of bring the stonework around the top as well, just to sort of give it the flavor that it is sort of believable that there's stones stacked up on top. And so that is, as again, sorry about the light. I know it's so bright, but you, hopefully you can see uh, how that's working out there. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And so, and so then we're just going to transition into some craggly rocks. And so to do that, we're just going to sort of no rhyme or reason on how we're doing this. I start on one end and then kind of work my way, turn it the piece over and do the other side. Something like that per se, not too bad. And then we turn the piece over and sort of finish that out. Mm -hmm. 
no rhyme or reason of how we're doing this. We're just sort of getting it done. And so you can kind of see how that looks there. Sorry for all the traffic in the neighborhood. It's uh, sort of loud. But anyway, that's sort of how that is going to look, at least the uh, envision that I had. I'm gonna take care of this side here. There. So that's how that piece is designed to look. Uh, and so that'll fit nicely and I'll show you what that looks like after we go back inside. I'll do the other piece and then I'll meet you back inside and we'll put it all together. Okay, well, we're back inside in the air conditioning. In Arizona, man, it is hot. It is, uh, it's only 97 degrees, but it's still fairly early in the morning. So um, I've got it all put back together. So let me show you what it all looks like now and uh, we'll put this one in the books. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we go. Here's the whole completed piece that we've done this morning. Uh, you can see the riverbed is obviously cut and running through. That'll be very detailed. Uh, the sign covers it just like I wanted it to, or at least that's about where the sign is going to go. You see the uh, stonework around, uh, it's a little easier to see in this light. You see the stonework around the stairs, you see the stairs look pretty good, not too bad. And then you see the kind of the craggy, uh, rocky areas there that are going to be uh, painted to resemble, uh, you know, rocks and uh, sides of cliffs and things like that. And as we come around to the to the other side, you can see sort of how that, that lines up there. Uh, obviously, uh, so this takes care then of all of the cutting that we're planning on doing on this piece, I believe. Um, so you can see this side here. Let me kind of move this out of the way. You can see the, the path that will be leading up the rocks and then the stairs turn out pretty good, especially once they're, you've, they're kind of ground down with a Dremel tool and the, then they're sort of uh, detailed a little bit. And then the paint will really help to make those pop. And then that will lead up to the cemetery and the church. Um, and so it's coming along uh, nicely and, and you'll be able to see that sort of behind there with a little dirt trail leading up to that. And then once the, the ground texture is on and the, uh, the fall leaves and a whole bunch of fall trees, um, it's just gonna really pop with color. And then don't forget, we're gonna have the orange pumpkin patch back in here. And this, I laid the tool there. That's a lesson, right? No matter how long you've been doing this, it's easy to make mistakes. Now that'll all be covered up with grass, so you'll never see it. But still, uh, if that had been in an area that wasn't gonna be covered up, you'd have to come up with a way to fix that. And so just be careful, uh, no matter how long you've been doing this, you can certainly make mistakes. I make several, uh, every, every piece that I try to do, uh, have a, a whole bunch of mistakes in it, but uh, you live and learn. So anyway, guys, this video is uh, is long enough. Uh, this is part two. This is a lot of work done and you got to see most of it. So hopefully that helps answer a lot of questions and helps you to uh, feel confident and comfortable in doing this. Uh, what we're gonna do next is paint. Now we're gonna start getting the paint uh, on the pieces. Everything's gonna be done for the most part in either a brown or a black. Some areas are going to have black for that undertone as we do the dry brushing. Most of the areas will be painted brown uh, and that will help to uh, seal everything in and get it ready to further detail. And then we're going to put the um, Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty down into the riverbed. Uh, actually, that'll probably be the next thing that I do is put that into the riverbed, allow that to cure and dry for a few hours and then start the painting uh, because that's gotta be painted as well. And that will protect the foam for the resin that we're gonna pour in there. Once everything is detailed and done and all the details are on, the resin will be the last thing we do. And then this will sit for 24 hours to cure uh, and then it'll be done and good to go. So with that, I hope, uh, I hope this has been uh, beneficial to you. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, let's, uh, let's call it done. Okay guys, so hopefully that was beneficial to you. Hopefully that's helped uh, answer some of the questions, like I said before. 
pretty pleased with the way, the way it's turning out. It's going to look a whole lot better once it's detailed. So like always, if you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and consider doing that. Helps the channel to grow. Certainly gives me the, uh, the motivation and uh, the desire to keep pushing out these videos. I absolutely love what I do. I hope you guys are benefiting from it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave those uh, in, the, uh, in the area below. I try to answer every single one. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and we'll talk to you again real soon.